Melbourne got their own Facebook page? Or it's no, it's all combined now. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you now log in at emergencyservices.big.whatever it is, and you put your member number in and your password and everything, and then you can apply for Hertz, Avis, blah, blah, blah. All of the, you get government rates at all the hotels. We couldn't get better than what I had the other night. Oh, free? Yep. Oh, there we go. Yes. What's your name? Yes, cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And no, that was at the Pullman. Oh, was it? Yeah. Did you
Winter. Uh, they're out in Port Melbourne and nice in South Melbourne. Not yet, I know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Street. What's it called? Burger Life. Burger Life. They have a uh, is this sex shop, is it? No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Things that do with these. They do hollow yeah, burgers, yeah. but they have a oh, really? yeah. champion something or other. 3.7 kilos of meat burger. Wow. 50 bucks. Why? If you, exactly why. If you can eat it in the record time, you get it free. The yeah, thing is, it's a bloody heart attack right in heaven. Yeah. Right. Show's on. Oh, man. Okay. Drum roll. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Yep. I roll them. Okay. Um, Last year sometime, Nikki asked me to give a presentation on developing, programming, whatever you want to call it, and I really wasn't doing anything with Joomla or developing, and yeah, couldn't think of anything to present. But anyway, since then, I had a few things sort of started to all come together, um, where about November or whatever, I had uh, some clients well, basically two, two clubs starting to look at these cloud-based membership services that, where you pay 10 or 15 bucks a member or whatever and they will provide you the software to manage your club um, and so they were sort of looking at maybe oh, we get a website we'll move away and do that um, <coughs> one of the clubs actually had a very big forum that I've moved onto Joomla so I really didn't want to see them get off that because it just makes the life a lot more complicated. So I looked at different extensions, OS membership probably being the obvious one, um, and there's a couple of other smaller ones, um, but found that they're good at what they do, but kind of difficult if you want to start doing other things. So something like OS membership where you've got, it's really targeted at subscription membership for online service or whatever. Um, it was going to be hard if we started to put in, in this case, vehicles, adding vehicles to it, or the um, the other club, the basketball club, and they wanted online membership management or whatever, and team registration, <coughs> etc. So it was going to be difficult to work with uh, any of those things. Um, and I was sort of thinking I wanted to have another crack at learning how to code Joomla. I've had a couple of goes at it over the years, but it's yeah, it does me head in, so I give it up after a while. Um, so I thought I'd start with something easy, but I'm kind of finding that's not quite the case with this. And um, at the moment, what you, what you see is just me trying to get things to work and trying to like learn how to code along the way, but just trying to see what I can get to function. Um, it's not particularly usable at the moment, and. Yeah, and I'm sort of still a lot of theory happening up here and got to see whether it will actually work. Um, and bricks is just a collection of little or smaller Joomla components and plugins. And if you think about it, what I'm, I'm doing is just taking the features out of, say, something like OS membership or some of the invoicing programs, whatever, pick all the good bits out of them put them into their own, hopefully, more or less standalone components. And then the idea is you sort of connect them all together via plugins or clever little bits of coding. Um, and so you can build, well, with using the same code base for um, things like the people and the addresses and whatever, you can actually have multiple um, custom built applications. So the the code base for a basketball club is going to be the same as for a vehicle club except for one's going to have teams and one's going to have vehicles. All the rest of it's pretty much the same. So that's sort of where um, bricks is sort of going. Um, I'm lazy and I don't like or don't want to end up having a, um, <coughs> a whole code base that looks after this basketball club and then another one for this vehicle club and if I get a good idea in this one I will go over here and retrofit it I want just one bit of code that both can use um, and it's not that 
what I'm building at the moment is based around membership for clubs. But the idea is if, if I've got a, another client that uh, got a wine storage business and he wants uh, things so his people can come in and register or see what wine they've got stored there, when it went in, when it went out, how much they're going to get charged, etc. So the idea is with common components for that business, it should be the same as the people, the addresses um, that you see in what I've built so far. Um, and if I get it all figured out properly, hopefully it, um, other people might sort of say, oh, well, I, I want to do something else that I haven't thought of, so they can write their own little bit or get their own little brick or block or whatever you want to call it, um, get it written and they can <coughs> attach it with all, everything else. Um, it doesn't really replace, if you, if you need the simple, you can actually just attach these things and no coding and make them work together. But if you've got more complicated needs, you, you might just find this does, or I might find this only does about 50% or 80% of it. I've still got to go out and write code specific to that um, requirement. Um, so yeah, so a brick, a simple brick is just a component. Um, it's got to do the basic read, write, update. Um, so you think of a table that, that has the same the basic form, list, um, for some of the more advanced tables I've got like cross-reference tables, so there will be two tables of cross-reference so I can map it out to the other components. Um, and you can do things like, um, well hopefully, some of this Joomla core features are in there. Um, I haven't got custom fields to get working, but I do categories and tags, and I'm working on trying to work out APIs. So other components or as a mobile work you might be able to just call it to get the data. Um, and the thing about the components is trying to keep it so that they don't know or are not aware that any other component is out there. So they're not sort of, oh this person is aimed around a membership thing so there's a membership component out there. Um, and what happens is they get the plugins and they're the thing that actually connects the people to the addresses or the addresses to the vehicles or the membership to the people and whatever so it's proving a little harder than I thought but I am sort of getting some of the bits working um, and yeah data in importing exporting which is something I'm working on it or got to start working on what, what, what kind of API sorry what kind of API do you think so like a REST um, type API or, or just lying if I said I've actually written one <laughs> Um, <coughs> I'm just looking at other codes, so ACY Mail has a nice API, if you want to call it that, where if you want to add a subscriber or get information about a subscriber, what list they're looking at, they just have this one helper file that's just got all the models and all the things you need. Um, I've read a lot about RESTful and all that, and I'd like it to be that, but I don't need it at the moment, so I haven't had to write it. Itself is missing. It's a proper Sorry? Something Joomla itself is missing at the moment. It's a proper REST API. To be able yeah, to other systems at the moment I'm just trying to get things to work and then I'm trying to learn I how they should work. I was reading, so there's uh, this is one called Tech Joomla, who builds an API, a REST API for Joomla. Yeah, there is a... Um, I've seen, seen it in the the so Ultimately, yes, I would like it to be RESTful and all the rest of it. The moment, just getting things yeah, to talk to one another is getting hard. Um, yeah, so just an example, these are, um, with the exception to the invoicing, these are the four that I've written for the card. So there's a people module, there's an addresses module, membership, um, and vehicles. So it's not too sophisticated to look at it, it's just lists and um, forms and on my vehicle thing I have a plug-in that potentially could connect <coughs> it to OS membership. So it's it, I had to present what I was up to to this vehicle club the other week. And as a fallback if I because it it kind of given me a few more months to get this thing working. But as a fallback I said, well look, that thing I showed you last year, if you want to use that I'll maybe attach your vehicle database to that. So this was my backup plan. But 
um, and it was a bit of an accident because um, when I wrote to plug in to handle vehicles to the bricks of com people by coincidence OS membership actually uses the same field names so my little sophisticated PC here is you can select here in the plugin whether you want to talk to bricks people or OS membership simply all I'm doing is changing the table name to go and get it out of the bricks table rather than my table right. um, yeah. so that was just simply by accident that their field names happen to match my field names and it was a nice simple thing if I want to start using their membership area I haven't ever looked at it but I would have to think about it but ultimately this is kind of the flexibility that I want to build into it so that if you only need if you're using OS membership and you just need to add a vehicle database to it you should be able to connect it in or you might use a whole lot of other things that have something that favour there and it may or may not fit anyway one good thing with those guys is they let you actually override more than just templates um, I sort of I get a bit of layout for templates and yeah. Um, sports club thing, so it's the same bricks running people the membership addresses and none of these other things I've actually written yet, but um, they're the sort of things that I'd expect a sports club would be wanting. They want to invoice, they want to know what pet teams people are in, um, the clubs that I'm involved with, they do masters games, so they want to um, have the team set up, push a button, and register the teams with the um, um, like the different organisations around Australia and the world. Um, and then the example there before about a wine storage business, I'd use some of the same components, same bricks, obviously membership's not in there, um, and there's this big lump of code in the middle that's probably going to be very specific to this business, but stuff around it um, can be code or there. So in a way it's not too different to if somebody asks you to write a custom component and you wrote a custom component and then someone else asks you to write another <coughs> something else and you go and pinch all those bits of code and put them over here. Mm. I'm just sort of putting those bits of code in the middle and saying well you can share them and not have to keep rewriting them. So in theory, well that's what I hope in theory is going to work that we'll be able to do stuff like that. Um, now the way that I've built these addresses and people for example um, in a club situation you have people and you attach addresses to them in a business situation you're going to have clients and there's going to be an, an address for the client like their bricks and mortar store or whatever where you send the invoice and there might be one or two people associated with that business so you attach the people to the client rather than to the addresses and so again it's all this sort of trying to make it very universal and very usable. Um, that's basically what you see, the, the bricks, the membership, people and vehicles, um, because they're standalone components. Um, but I do have plans to work on a, a dashboard type arrangement where you can go in there and configure it so it all looks like one application to the end user. They don't if you want to go in there and mess around with it, you can hit the individual components, but you should be able to come up with, well, hopefully I'll come up with a dashboard, and then that'll just have all the side menus and everything that looks like it's all nicely integrated. Um, I've done a little bit on that, but not enough to show anyone. Um, simple person form, you've got the names, the details, whatever. Um, their personal information, so that's things like date of birth, sort of things a club might, or any organisation where they need to know what age they are and um, things. And <coughs> so then we have an, a, an address table out there, or address database, and you go into the plugin for addresses and tell it which components you want to interface addresses with. So in this case, you tell it that you want it to work with com, uh, people and vehicles in a vehicle type of situation. <coughs> Just go into the thing there. Um, sort of what you were asking about the layouts and templates, I think. The, the use layout, um, you can supply, or there's layout supplied with the mod, uh, with the component, which is just really defaulty ones, but it all 
I've tried to use all the Joomla standards, so if you then want to override it using the Joomla way, then you should be able to do that. So, um, yeah, so that's used by that. You just get a, a list of files in a directory and you just tell it what you want to use. And then when you go to look at your first net at this time, you see the same tabs that addresses popped in. And I also clicked it on on membership as well. So you can now see the addresses appearing up against the person. Now, if this was um, now with addresses, you could have multiple addresses assigned to people. So in the two clubs that I'm working with, one of them has the big long spreadsheet that's got the person's name, and then it's got two no, two two people, and then it's got one address for their residential, and then it's got another one for their postal and thing. You know, and then they have this other spreadsheet which looks after all their vehicles and with big roads and they've got to have two addresses where to send the bill and where the vehicle is actually resides. So that's another two addresses. So instead of doing the usual deal and just having one address attached to it, I've set it up so you can actually just keep creating as many addresses as you like. Or you can keep you can connect the same address to the person, one of the postal address. Um, you can basically type in whatever you want to call it. So the idea is postal, might be residential, might be a billing address, shipping, could be whatever. So you can you can attach the same address or different addresses to individuals or to vehicles or if I wanted to I could do it to memberships. Um, and this is just the the end of the list of vehicles where the membership plugins jumped in and sort of giving us a list of whether that whether that vehicle belongs to an active member or an inactive member. So again it's just trying to get one component to share information with another component. Um, but because of the way Joomla does sorting or um, yeah does sorting on its by doing the sort out of my SQL. Um, it's, that's why you don't see it in blue there. You can't sort it, it's just kind of like tacked on the end of it. Um, so, but that's, I, yeah, I want that to be automated, that's a big thing on that. Um, now just an example in the, for, the uh, for the vehicles, but each component, I'm trying to put in as many common fields as I can think of, or based on the three or four clubs I'm involved with. And you can say, well, some of these fields don't relate to us, so you can just turn them on and off, and they just don't appear on the forms, the list, or whatever. Ultimately, I'd like to get to um, from a, where you have some components where you get little columns, and you say, I want it in the form, I want it on the list, I don't want it in the front end, so it'll be something like that eventually. Yeah, I was waiting for someone asking for custom fields too, Terry, so... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so just getting that to work initially yeah, yeah. is tricky enough. But um, yeah, so I'm just trying ideas out, seeing what I can get to work, and um, that ultimately they're the sort of things I want to do. Just give it that more flexibility. Um, you know, just an example of the, the membership plugins. I started off the two at the bottom there, where I have with the people component comes a plugin that connects people to memberships and with the vehicle component comes a plugin that connects vehicles to membership. Now I've only got four components talking to one another and if three plugins per component it starts to get quite complicated mm. or it could get quite complicated as this thing grows. So um, the top plugin that you see there I've changed the way I'm doing things so um, there's sort of this because what was happening was the two, uh, the two bottom one there, there was a lot of code that was essentially the same. So I took the code and just made it a little bit more universal, stuck it in the membership display, and when it gets triggered, just like any other plugin, it gets triggered, but it tells it what context it's in, and if it's in the people context, it will um, attach the membership in one way. If it's in the vehicle context, it will attach it a different way. So I'll. Yeah, so I, sh I should be able to delete those bottom two um, and just have one plug-in, one or two plug-ins um, per component. Um, 
um, yeah, so these are, um, <coughs> yeah, what I'm saying there about the starting to become familiar, like want to figure out how to do one thing, but sort of, oh, quick, I'll copy that, and I'll create the, the next pixel and improve it. Um, now I'm sort of starting to get into ways of making all that nice shareable code, putting it in a library. Um, and as I said before, I'm starting on the, the data import, which kind of hoping will work where if someone gives you a spreadsheet that people, like a normal membership one, it'll be people, addresses, some other crud, that you go into the people um, component to say that you want to do an import. And when you bring up the thing, it'll say what's your file name or Excel spreadsheet, whatever, um, CSV file. So you s select your file, but then every other component there that um, has an import plugin turned on will jump in and say, uh, is there any information here for me? And so you can map out the fields, so the big thing, like a membership spreadsheet. Some of the information will go into a people database, some will go into the address field, some will go into the membership area, and like this club, uh, vehicle club I'm doing it for at the moment, they've got a vehicle thing which has members, vehicles and addresses on it, so that's going to sort of put away. So yeah, so the I, what I'm hoping to do, set it up so that yeah, the other little plugins jump in, and then you just map the fields for it, and it will just read the line and send this information to that component, tie it all together. On. Um, yeah, we currently have categories and tags implemented on most, yeah, I think on most of the components and I want to get to the point where I can add custom fields so that if there's a field I haven't thought of or whatever, it gives a bit of flexibility. Um, <coughs> trying to use as much of the standard Joomla stuff, try to stay away from the fancy stuff. Um, so yeah, so all things like layouts and template overrides and everything hopefully maybe it should work. Um, yeah, what have we got the map? Yeah, uh, before I use mapping tables, there's some of the things that gives a bit of more flexibility in being able to assign multiple addresses. Um, and in the case of two of the clubs that I'm working with, they give you one membership number and they've got two or three people somehow in that one line in the spreadsheet that like husband and wife or partner or whatever and when you start trying to squeeze them into other programs that I kind of expect one person, one membership, one person, it doesn't quite work. So by having mapping across reference tables, you can have one membership and attach multiple people to it. So in the case of a a sporting club you might have three kids and mum and dad all attached on the one membership um, in the vehicle club says husband, wife, partner, de facto, whatever. Um, yeah, so a little bit of um, flexibility there. And same with addresses, you can have that's fun before you have know, multiple addresses. Um, uh, and yeah. Um, things like OS membership, it has a specific way of doing things with subscriptions and plans. In what I've done so far, I've just basically you're a member and you're active. You join this date and you're active, and there's not really much more to it than that. But if I wanted to, I could put in a component that does do subscriptions and does do plans, and you can tie it all together so it updates that membership component that you see. So this is sort of the idea of trying to pick the best ideas out of what's out there, make them work together if you want them, or if you just need a simple membership, you just need to know if they're active or not, then um, not very much more different to a um, spreadsheet, then yeah, you just put the components you need and um, leave the rest out. And question, oh, I've got these three myself, so I think it's going to work. Um, so far, so good. It goes up and down. <laughs> Some days I get, get on a bit of a roll and I think, yep, everything's going well, and then I'll hit something, and it's like, uh, it could be biting, could be in the wrong area here. But um, it 
something will come out of this. I don't know whether it's going to work exactly how I want it, but I'm making the rules, so I might just change the rules a bit. Um, I think by sort of making them all stand alone and not know about the other things, I think there might be some situations where we're going to have to know that a particular component is going to talk to them or not. Um, is it going to be available to others? If I get it working properly, I would really like to think that the code's good enough that other people might want to use it or might be able to use it. Um, but I'm a bit careful about making it tough, like sticking it on jet or something like that, um, and then having a massive support issue because yeah, everyone thinks this is going to be better than sliced bread and yeah. it's not designed to be sliced bread. Yes. And then you're sitting there answering dumb questions. Anyone that's read some of the questions or comments on Jed uh, or I've some of the forums, what those applications die under the weight of those kind of queries. AEC was one mm -hmm. that down the screen and came through to that kind of thing. Yeah, so there might be a, I don't know, a minimum requirement that you need to meet before I'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, and no, it's not just for membership applications. It's the idea is I've got two other clients that I've got in mind that some of this stuff will be the basis for what I use for them um, and yeah, there's probably no reason why it can't be used for a lot of other other things. Um, um, yeah, um, so anyway, so that's it. Uh, any more questions? Or? I, had a, I had a question, sorry. Oh, okay. Have you determined that Joomla is the right framework for this? Um, yes, I didn't really want to. Well, that's true. Yeah, I didn't right. really want to learn anything else. Okay, so that's fair enough. The original, back at the start when the couple of clubs are looking at moving away from Joomla, um, my intention was to try and make Joomla do more for them, mm -hmm. whether it's an existing extension or this. So, yeah, looking at other frameworks or other CMS of what really wasn't coming into the thing. Okay. I have looked at odd bits and pieces of maybe um, things like Node and all that, but yeah. that's, oh, if you go off to that, is. you lose a whole lot of things that come with Joomla. Mm. Yes. So I've actually gone the other way and I've looked at the Joomla platform. Right. To see whether, or whatever they call it this week, but um, yeah, I've looked at that to see how much in that is useful, and it could be done down at that level. But every the other things that they've got, like this large forum um, on one of the sites, and ACY Mail, and some of these things that actually What's do work forum? really well together. What's the forum? Uh, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, never know how to pronounce it, but that one. Uh, um, yeah, those things that do come with or are available and are good. Like I'm not planning to write some newsletter or email type component. I'm just going to pass it on to AC White Mail and let it do it because it does allow you to work with it. Um, it's just some of these other things where you get um, like just heaps of extension that will do your invoicing for you and that's all they do they'll send an invoice out but if you do want to do anything like um, keep a list of your vehicles or keep a list of your wine or whatever you can't use all that information in that invoicing application so you end up with duplicating information or writing things to go between so I'm sort of trying to take it the other way start off by writing them not talk to one another right but able to plan to talk to one another for it. A lot of these things are built, this is all we want to do. Yes. And that's what they build. And what I've found is the, the thinking process and when you think about some of the problems and how to do things, you've got to come at it a real different way to what I would say traditionally you would look at a problem. Um, so yeah, so it's been interesting from that point of view how to, how to solve some of the problems. So mm -hmm. where you saw those um, on the form where we, you saw things connecting, like a tab now appears with the address of the membership. Um, essentially, I, I think I pinched the idea of OS membership. Um, 
but that just uses a looping arrangement. You, you stick extra layouts into a, or extra forms or field sets into an object and then just so when it comes to display it, just cycle through the field sets rather than having field sets hard coded in your in your um, template or your layout. Um, so doing that and then having that happen in a list is a totally different ball game. It just doesn't work the same. But that's the sort of thing I want to do. I well, think you might want to work Terry in terms of actually delivering the job for the car for in particular. What I was actually saying earlier is that in OS membership you can override the core files, not just the templates. So that they can override <coughs> controller files and classes and helpers. Um, I know that because I had them do a customization to get it to sync data with the community building. Yeah. Um, and they were kind of like, oh yeah, we can do that without breaking your updates. We actually have instructions doing overrides on the core files, mm. which I must admit at the time impressed me immensely. I was like, really? You can do overrides on controls and stuff. So you can actually go and write your own functions to add on to their existing system. So. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Well, like, there are OS membership being one of them, AC1R. AC1 they are good components and I'd say that about the new AC1 mail, but um, <laughs> it's got a fair way to go. <laughs> it has. But the existing one's very powerful and it does allow you to do that. So, but when I looked at some of the code, um, yeah, I had a bit of trouble trying to work out how you could just connect up a gear to the database. And I didn't like the way that AC, um, OS membership does the username and then sticks a membership in. And that's just a bit weird, which you'd want to override. Um, so, yeah, so I'm trying to get to the point where I get, get those good things that, put, that are in these other components or at least understand how they do them and get them into something like this. Um, how many hours do you reckon you're throwing at it? So? How many hours do you reckon you're throwing at it? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. That many? Witness. <laughs> I spent three nights, I, like, I do my other job three during nights, the day. Three that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Take that. I spent probably 12 to 18 hours over three nights trying to get it so that I could do type ahead on the address field. So you could oh, yeah. so so yes. try it. Yeah, old auto complete. Anyway, there's an Ajax way to do it. There's a JS script way to do it. There's all these different ways to do it. There's all these things. And I read all of them trying to work out pulling some library out of the chip. And eventually I found somebody on a, I think it was Stack Exchange, that's my favourite new place to hang out now. Yeah. Someone said if you change the parameter from on a um, standard Joomla feature, JM um, HTML behaviour, usually on the top of all your forms, if you change, there's a parameter in there and you tell it to go to zero rather than the default is 10. If you go to zero, type the head works on all your fields from the start. But by default, it's set to 10, and it won't work until you've got more than 10 things in your select list. Oh. Once you go past 10 lists, then type the head works. That'd be well documented, that would Oh, it's not documented <laughs> other than what I found on this stack exchange. Yeah. And so, to spend essentially three nights looking for the answer and to find out if the parameter that I changed and or had I actually put more yeah, than ten so dots? Teaching yourself how to program at the same time. It's not oh yeah, it's it's even if all this doesn't work out, yeah. I've learned a hell of a lot, um, particularly about how to get these things to talk to one another. For sure. Um, so yeah, the worst thing is these things might just become a standalone application um, that I just use and it works until I write something else or find something better. Um, so yeah, that quite possibly going to happen, I don't know. Um, come and try. Yeah, no, it was really impressive. Mm. So. Well done. Good man. Good man. Good You'll have to come back and we present when it's all finished. So, so we'll see you next year when it's all done. Um, four months. He's no, he's got four months. Oh, four <laughs> it'll, months. It'll, it'll right. never be finished. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I've gone along and I've gone this way with some ideas and then 
Ooh, that, that looks a better way to do it. Okay, this guy, I've rewritten certain things that just found better ways to do it, basically. So we were talking about gear knots like the other day, managing this through gear tool. Sorry? So we were talking about gear knots like the other day, how can you manage this through gear tool? You are. You, no, no, he's not, you're not managing this through GitHub. Sorry? You're not managing this through GitHub, are you? No, <coughs> I've sort of looked at looking it. at it, but I didn't <laughs> want to complicate things. Yeah. You just put it, you just put it in there at, at the moment. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I sort of change. vaguely understand the concept of it from the previous life, but, um, but yeah, oh, no, at the moment I, I use Notepad++. Plus Plus. And I have a local development and I write it all there and then I copy all the bits I've changed, stick them back in my installable component or plugin yep. and then put it back in and find out I've missed a bit of code so I've got to rewrite the same thing again. Done that a couple of times. Um, yeah, and I just keep doing that way. But yeah, we'll have to improve that process a bit. So um, yeah, I was looking at some of the explanations of how Git works. And, you know, I get it how it works, I still don't think we like using it, but <laughs> I understand it's actually... Really